Hey you guys, uh, since my internet connection doesn't seem to be too great for doing live videos, I'm going to do a very small video. I'm not going to do any major editing, um, but it's going to be better than what I could actually produce for the live videos. So today I just wanted to show you this little turtle that I need to repair. And what's happened to it is you can see here the foil has broken away. So this poor little guy, he fell, banged his leg, and it snapped across here. Thankfully, none of the glass is broken. So it just means having to sort of unsolder this so that we can wrap a new piece of foil around and then start putting it back together. So I thought this would be a great little introduction to repairs for you guys. Um, not that you're necessarily going to be doing any large repairs, but if you have a project, I know I, myself, um, I've accidentally broken some before they were finished. Um, so I'm sure I'm not the only one. And this is a simple way to be able to show you how to remove the extra pieces of glass so that you can get out the one that you need. Okay, so I'm just going to bring the work surface over, put the turtle down. Now you're going to see my gloves are all discolored. Uh, that's just because I use nitrile gloves. Uh, so they're a little bit thicker and sturdier and I can use them multiple times and they discolor from the flux. So I have my iron here, it's turned on so that I can start melting the solder away. And the very first thing I'm going to do is actually start putting some flux on both sides on all of the extra pieces so that I can melt that solder to remove them. Now you might be wondering why, why am I not just sort of taking it back to here and then putting a new piece of foil on and just patching it from about here to here. And that's because if we do that, this is gonna happen again. Uh, it's, it makes a very, very weak joint. The way to do it properly is to take the whole piece apart, clean it all up, put a brand new piece of foil on, and when you're putting the new piece of foil on, you typically want to bury it under a piece. And I would bury it up in here somewhere where I start and wrap and then finish again. And that's so that the joint is covered and it makes it a little bit more solid as well. So we have some flux on there. And then we just start melting the solder to try and remove as much as we can. And you can see here the foil actually broke on, on the leg as well. There's a section there that has no, no foil at all. It takes a little while to let it heat up, but it shouldn't take too long to do something this size. Now the trick is when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that it's melted enough that the pieces detach on their own. If you try to kind of bend them or pull them off, you could actually destroy the foil on the piece that's still intact and then you have to do more work to put it back together later. And you'll notice I don't have the piece flat on the table. I have it angled a little bit and that's so that I can control where the solder is, is going to roll or flow once it's melted. We have a little hook in here, so I'm just going to pull that guy out. And I don't mean pull it as in yank it off. I'm just going to hold it with the pliers so that I get a good grip and melt it so that I can remove it. So again, just working my way around trying to remove any excess solder that I don't need. So I'm just using the iron underneath to let all the solder melt through the bottom. And I think that's about as much as I'm gonna get off of there. So still working on the same piece. If I heat it up and I'm holding it off the table just a little bit so the weight of the project is actually going to help me pull this piece off. And see, I didn't damage the foil there at all. It's still still adhered very well. It's not torn or pulled away. So again, just continue along. I 
I really should move these because everything's sticking to them. <laughs> Get them out of the way. Now, if you're curious as to what it is I'm actually working on this work surface here on the table is just, um, sorry, I should turn this around so you can see, just a piece of cork uh, that I bought years ago uh, at Walmart. It was like a set of four, I think, of these pieces. They were meant, they were in the office section. They were meant for being able to make little um, bulletin boards or pin boards on your, your walls in the office. And I think they're perfect for what I need for very small projects like this. And it doesn't take up too much of my table. So again, just still melting off any of the excess. There you can actually see that the two pieces didn't fit perfectly together to begin with. And when it's melted, you can see the hole. There's like a space in between. Not sure how well you can see that in the video, but right down there, there's a space, which is perfect. So I'll just finish getting out as much as I can. Okay, and you can see I just have one little piece there and it's still attached here. So I'm going to loosen this end that's where you kind of have to be extra careful so that you don't accidentally put too much weight on one section and have it tear. So again, another piece came off perfectly. The last little arm here. Sound like I said arm hair, didn't it? <laughs> Melt this one. And there we go. So while the iron is still hot, I'm just going to go around the edges where the pieces are actually going to go back together later and smooth them out and make sure that there's no little lumps of solder that's going to be in the way when I try to fit them together afterward. <clears throat> okay, and this is the one that's broken, so I'm going to have to remove that piece of foil anyway. There. Okay. Now sometimes you're going to find that if you have some really thick sections of foil when it's wrapped around the edge of a piece, if you melt off the excess again, it's going to be easier to get that piece of foil off. Otherwise you've got basically a chunk of metal that you're trying to pull off of there. Plus you can reuse this solder, so it's a great way to recycle what you've already got on the go. So that's it for that. I'll come back to this piece. It might be a bit cooler. And we should be able to actually pull the foil off. If it's giving you too much of a hard time, you can always use a little knife, like an X-Acto knife or a utility knife to pull it off of there. This doesn't seem to be too bad though. Now that I've said that, I can't get the corner. So when you're using a knife, what I like to do is just open the blade enough that you can kind of slide down one side. So I slice the front off and then I slice the back off. And then you can easily go around the side and just pull that off. It'll come off just perfect. Okay, and the same goes for this. So we'll cut the front side off. You're going to want a good sharp blade for this too if you've got a really ratty old blade that's dull. Okay. 
And because there's flux all over this project and I'm using a metal knife, the blade is going to start to rust after this. Um, I usually try to keep one of my knives in decent shape for doing this sort of thing. And then I keep my other ones good and try not to use them around the chemicals. So that's done. I've got the foil off of here. I've got the foil off of this piece. So now I'm just going to stop the camera. I'm going to go and clean them up. And uh, when I'm ready to foil, I'll come back and um, you'll see me then. All right. See you in a bit. Okay. So I'm back with my two pieces that have been cleaned. And all I used was some hot water, dish soap, and um, a sponge that has one of those little plastic scrubbies on the back of it. And I just scrubbed it all up to clean off any of the old adhesive that I could get off and any of the chemicals that I put on it when I was doing the soldering before. So I'm just going to quickly foil these back together. Well, foil them individually, but so that we can put it back together. And as you'll notice, I started, this is one of the legs, I started on the part where it's going to be the seam against the body. So it's along this edge here where I stopped and started. That way it's hidden in the seam and it's less likely to tear open long term. So we'll burnish this on here really well. Sorry, my table wiggles a little bit when I'm pushing on it like this, so sorry if the picture looks a little shaky. It's just the table wobbling. Okay. And so before, if you remember, I said I was going to start and stop my foil at the top because that's where it was most heavily buried under extra pieces of glass. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'll quickly foil this piece. And then overlap where I start and stop. There we go. Nothing super exciting about this part of it. This is just the same as you would do any other project that you're working on. It was more the idea of being able to get it taken apart that I really wanted to show you. But I may as well finish this so that you can have the opportunity to watch it if you'd like. And there we go. So that's all done. Move my foil out of the way. Fit away. I'll bring this back. So I'm just putting my gloves on and then we'll get started soldering this all back together. All right. So these are the, the front of the legs and the head. Now I'm just checking to see there is a little bit of texture on the glass. So I want to make sure I put it the same way. Yep, I'll do that. This, so they both have their texture going the same way. And these as well. I can't remember exactly how far down the legs were. That's something usually that I do is um, 
to either take just a snapshot. I mean, I do have the, uh, the video for reference, but uh, you can take a snapshot before you start taking things apart or uh, something like this. You can even just do a pencil tracing on a piece of paper around it so that you can be certain you're putting everything back exactly as it was. Okay, and this is just soldering like you always would. So I'll put some flux around here. Get these all attached and my solder's at the other end of the table. So I'll be right back. All right. So just using a regular 60-40 solder, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the arms and legs back onto the body. And then I'll finish flexing this because I didn't do the whole thing. Just find once it's attached, it makes things a little bit easier. And in order to get the patina all the same color, this has a copper patina on it. I'm going to actually re-solder over everything that was there already so that I can get an even color on the patina later. So if you ever wondered about patina being on something and then realizing, oops, I made a mistake or I missed something and you, you want to go back to solder it, a lot of people question whether they can actually do that. And yes, you most certainly can. You'll just need to use a little bit of uh, flux first just to allow things to start melting a little bit better for you. And when you start soldering something that already has patina on it, you're going to notice that it... Um, it's almost like you have to melt through a coating. It's, it's kind of a strange way to say it because the, the patina isn't a coating per se. It's just like a layer of chemical reaction on the outside, but it almost seems to toughen it a little bit. So you have to melt it just a little bit more to really get through the color. So I'll give this a second to cool and then I'll turn it over. And put a little bit of flux on this side too. I use a liquid flux. There we go. So again, I'm just melting through all the copper patina that was on there. I'll use some of these blobs that I have on the side for putting everything back together which I should have done on the first side <laughs> instead I used the spool. Oh well, it will get used. So again, just melting through that copper. Sometimes it takes a couple of passes before it completely melts. And I'll just keep working my way around. If you're wondering why I'm holding <clears throat> the wire here, it's just because where I'm set up for the video, the plug is on the wrong side and it was kind of dragging against the table and not moving when I wanted it to, so I'm just holding it here to make it work a little bit better for the video. All right. So the front and back are done. I'm just gonna add a little bit more on here. 
Wow, that piece is being difficult, isn't it? There, that's better. Perfect. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and do the outside edges. Now this has the copper on it here. So you're going to notice more of those black specks just because there's basically impurities that are, are melting off of there a little bit. And when you're using, when you're soldering over top of something that already has patina on it, um, you're going to probably want to keep cleaning your tip a little bit more often of your iron too, just to keep things all nice and shiny and working really well for you. It's getting a little bit warm right now, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to finish it all in the video for you, but I'll keep going and see. So anywhere that there's huge sort of globs that are in the way, I take them off. I always do that just so that I can add a little bit at a time where I want it instead of trying to control a humongous blob that's hot and likely to fall on me and burn me. So I just like to get them out of the way entirely and then come back and add a little bit more back if I have to afterwards. Now I might have been able to leave this patina alone and just buff the heck out of it, <laughs> maybe get it back up to the same color. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I know that the, um, the formulations for the patinas are probably different from company to company. So if whatever was on here before is a different brand than what I'm using today, I might get a different color. So whenever I'm working on repairing anything, I like to make sure that it's all going to look consistent. 
I've always been told if you're going to do something, you may as well do it right the first time. So <laughs> rather than uh, skip that and then hope that the colors are the same later, and then if they're not having to redo it, I just do it all right from the beginning. Okay, we're almost done here, guys. You can really see a lot of those black specks in here, like I was saying before, and that's simply because there's the, the copper patina that was on there already. There. Okay, so what I always do once I have a project done, uh, and I haven't really gone back and looked at it for any touch-ups yet, but I'll walk you through the, the line of thinking that I use whenever I'm looking at a piece to see if it's done. So the first thing I'm always looking for is to see if there's any copper showing. And I don't mean copper from the patina before, I mean just regular copper foil showing. Anything that you might have missed entirely. And uh, if there's none of that showing, which there isn't, then I can sort of go along and I'm going to kind of feel the edges, make sure there's no little picks that are sticking out or extra little bumps that shouldn't be there because sometimes these little beads will end up getting stuck on there. Okay, and there is one here that I noticed before, so I'm going to I'm going to fix that one, and I don't like the look of that seam either. So, then it's visually just to look at it and see what it is that you want to touch up. Move some of these little ball things out of my way here. There we go. Okay, that's that one. And the other thing you want to do is anywhere you have seams, you want to make sure that they're built up nicely. You want to have a nice rounded look. Nothing flat, nothing with divots anywhere. And then you can just sort of play around with it if you want to, just to spruce it all up. And then we always check the other side too. Just collecting a bunch of these tiny, tiny, tiny little balls of solder. There we go. Now when you have solder that falls on your glass like this, I'm sure you probably already know, but if you're really new, to stained glass, you might get worried about it, but you just let it cool a little bit and then you can just flick it off. It won't stick to the glass. And I, I boo-booed there a little bit, it rolled around the side, so I can touch that up. And there we go, we have a little turtle that's been repaired, so I just need to put the hook on and then he'll be ready to go. So uh, I use little jewelry pliers. I don't know if, how well you can see that in the video, but um, they're just small little pliers. I like them because they're small enough to work with to get into some of these little awkward places. Unlike the larger pliers would be, they just get in the way and they're too cumbersome, I find. So I'm putting the hook back where it was. And it's actually going to allow the turtle to hang, oops, I'll show you the front, on a little bit of an angle. So instead of putting it like this where he's, he's swimming straight up and down, uh, it's going to hang more in this sort of orientation so it'll hang from here. See that? There you go. So now I will um, go ahead and clean it and put patina on it and polish him and he'll be ready to go back home. Thanks guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments for the video. I'll be happy to try and answer them for you after since this isn't live. All right, take care. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Bye for now.